Hello! Right now I have a very clean desk, but by the end of this video I plan on filling it completely with my entire collection of bottled inks. So let's get into it! I've cleared everything off it, so hopefully I'll be able to fit all of my ink. I mostly have it in a couple of drawers, but I also have a few rogue bottles up in this rather messy tote box. At the moment I have three drawers full in my Alex case here, and if you saw my art studio tour and makeover earlier in the year, you'll re probably remember seeing these, but I have my inks sorted into fountain pen inks. An entire drawer full of those and then I have India and shellac inks which are in a little bit of a mess and I need to sort those out again so I should be pulling those out to do that and my last drawer is for more watercolor style inks and ink sprays so I'm going to pull everything out I'll move everything over in groups and sort them out on this desk and show you in more detail I'm starting off with my fountain pen inks and first up I have a small collection of Robert Oster fountain pen inks. These are made in Australia, it's an Australian company so of course I have to have some of these. There are loads of different colours and they keep bringing out new ones. I only have a few because they're not exactly cheap and I did start a collection but in the last couple of years of course it's been very hard to go to shops and things and I've been just completely out of using fountain pens so I'd really like to get back into that. In a future video I've been talking about it ever since I started my YouTube channel I really need to talk about my fountain pen collection one day I will get there but I just thought I'd do the inks today so this is the last pen show I went to in 2019 and usually there's a really large display of Robert Oster fountain pen inks and they have all of these little sample cards so I took a few samples of my own inks that I had. This is the one that I collected in 2019. I haven't bought any others since. All of the others were in 2018 I think. I think I got these ones in 2018 around my birthday so usually in October I end up buying inks for some reason my birthday is also this month as well as the full bottles I also have quite a lot of these sample bottles which they gave out at the Melbourne pen show for free and <laughs> I got some Nick got some and I think one year my mum also picked some up for me as well so I've got ridiculous amounts of them I just love these little tubes they're so useful and there doesn't look like very much ink in there. It's about two mil, I think, in each one. So it's not very much at all. But I've noticed that ink does go quite a long way. And you can usually get one or two converters worth in a fountain pen out of these inks. So that's pretty cool. And yes, I do have quite a lot of them here. <laughs> all in different colours. Some of them are doubles. But I went through and I think I also found a few other brands in here as well. Because quite a few companies were doing these little pots and I was so disappointed to find out just recently that this year's Melbourne Pen Show is also cancelled. It's always in November and unfortunately just the way things are we're not ready to open up fully yet. Uh, two years in a row it's not going to happen. That's very sad. Oh, I found another swatch card with some of the sample size Robert Oster inks on there. And there's a few more on there. So it was just a random collection. I really like the toffee and I think my next one might well be that Australian opal pink because that is so pretty. So in this little plastic box I've got a converter which I need to put into my platinum pen but I'm still using up cartridges for it so I thought I'd use those before I do that. I have a few cartridge boxes in here, one for my sailor pen and then there's I think my travellers company, that brass fountain pen I have. Schneider ones, I have no idea what those are for, <laughs> and these Lamy ones which I think I got on sale and are this pink colour and I'm like well why am I ever going to use that colour but there we go. I also have these little containers and each one of these is from the Inkvent calendar from 2019 that I did as my first ever video on YouTube so if you want to check that out it's all the way back at the beginning I have two videos one is swatching all of these colors and then the second one was doing a painting with all of the colors and yes I am aware there is a 2021 ink event calendar coming out I'm not sure if I'll get it on time we'll see how we go with that that's up in the air at the moment 
This larger bottle is also by Diamine who do the ink vent calendar and this was day 25 so you get a full size bottle for Christmas. I have a couple of black inks. One of these is Iro Shizuku ink and that's by Pilot and this one is by Mont Blanc in Mystery Black. I love these bottles, they're so pretty. That's the one thing that I can't resist about fountain pen inks is they usually come in really pretty packaging and these glass bottles are just so gorgeous. Even if I actually finished the ink out of these I would keep the bottles because I love them so much. More by Diamine and I got these at the pen show in Havasu turquoise and dark brown. You wouldn't know that from just looking at the bottle when they're sitting flat but you can see in the light that this one is brown and this one's got a bluer look to it so there were just a couple of colors that I thought were quite pretty I also found this one which was on sale and this is by Shreve Tinter <laughs> I don't know. I'm hopeless with German, but I just really like the color of this ink. This is a really gorgeous magenta and it was, I think, half price, so I picked it up. I also ended up getting one set of Colorverse inks. I had to get Schrodinger and Cat. I mean, look at that. It's so adorable, the little blue cat one. You can actually, I think, buy this one in a full size now. They've released it as a much larger one because this is like a 15 mil and I think now it comes in the 65 mil. I'm not 100% sure on that but I did see something on Colt pens and I would consider getting the cat again because this actually has shimmer in it so it does sparkle and it's really pretty. This one is a green ink, not one I would use so much so I kind of wish that the colors were reversed so that the blue shimmery one was in the larger bottle but I mean how can you resist them when they look like that they're so cute and Colorverse do release a lot of different bottled inks in groups like this they have all sorts of different series most of them are science based and I did think about collecting them but just for now I got these two because they're my favorites then I have this bunch of fountain pen inks and they look a bit messy that's because they were at a sale in a shop called Milligram, they had a huge warehouse sale in 2019 where they just had everything out in these boxes and it was just a total grab fest for everyone. They were a dollar each. These are not cheap when you see them at full price. So I just grabbed a whole bunch. <laughs> I didn't even really look at the colors. I'm like a dollar each, I'm sold. So I have not even really tested these. I just kind of bought them in a frenzy of buying cheap stuff. And so I really need to actually go through and paint these out into some swatches and actually use them a bit. But the reason they were selling them for so cheap is because some of the inks had run on a few of the bottles and so of course they've all been stained and the tags got ripped and things like that so they're seconds basically but the ink is still perfectly fine inside and I am more than happy to pay a dollar for a slightly damaged looking bottle but there's some pretty colors in here. I also have a more vintage bottle of ink. I found this in a vintage shop. It's still got full of ink and it works pretty well. I tested it out. So these are pretty easy to find and you can actually still buy these. I've seen them brand new in Officeworks. And look, it's even made in Australia, this one. And coming up to another group of fountain pen inks that I have, these ones are actually waterproof inks and they are by Diatramentis, which are known for their document inks and archive inks, which are like this one. So these ones you can draw with and paint over once they're dry and they work in fountain pens. Exclusive handmade ink for fountain pens. You can't put other drawing inks like India inks or anything into fountain pens because it will clog the nib. But these are especially designed with, I think, nano pigments, I think they call them, that are fine to work in fountain pens. Although I do like to make sure I clean out my fountain pens fairly quickly after using them just so that they don't fully dry inside in which case then you're probably going to get a bit of clogging but I found these on sale as well the red the dark blue and this one I just got because <laughs> it just looked fun there was a whole collection of different ones there was only Mozart left so I picked this one up I think it's a sort of a deep blood red color and this black archive ink is my absolute favorite to draw with it's so nice it's so dark and I also found one other one at the Melbourne pen show this one is also a sketch ink and it's in a gray color and it's by the same company 
that makes this one. So that's pretty much all of my fountain pen ink collection that I have for now. I have not bought any in a long time and probably once I start getting back into fountain pens, which I know I will eventually, I may end up getting some more, but I really do need to use up these inks first, I think. Oh my goodness, I have so many of them. This is the entire collection of Dr. P. H. Martin's Bombay India inks. There are two large sets of them, set A and B. I ended up getting both of them. I originally started with the first set, which are more your primary kind of colours, the standard magenta, blue, yellow, red, all of those ones. And then the secondary set had a lot more of the earth colours and things like that. I also have three of their iridescent collection. You can see I haven't used these ones for a while because they split really easily. Up here is the liquid and down here is all of that heavy mica pigment. So these ones are an absolute nuisance. You have to stir them with a stick because shaking them does nothing to get that pigment up. It's so heavy. A few of the India inks also split like the sepia one. This one's got a really heavy pigment in there. And then other ones like the yellow I think is pretty good. Most of the teals and blues they don't really need to be shaken. You can see I've used this yellow quite a lot. It's a really nice translucent one. I have a full review on all of these inks if you want to check that out. I did it sometime last year. I will try to link it somewhere either up there, down in the description or on one of the end cards. So look out for that if you want to see more detail on these. They have a little stopper and you cannot use these in fountain pens because they will dry up inside the nib and then that is it. You can never get that out again. These, once they dry, are completely waterproof. They're also really light fast and I highly recommend them as a set. They're really great India inks and I've used them a lot. The other inks that I am really growing to love are these ones by Sennelier. These are more of a shellac base, so they will also dry completely waterproof, but they have this amazing sheen to them. They're usually very transparent, and I am a big fan of them. You can see how transparent that yellow is there, and that goes on much more yellow than it looks in the bottle. For some reason, this one does not have a stopper. This is a grey one, but I do like the bottles like this. These are actually sometimes more useful for dipping your pen in, whereas the stoppers are a bit of a nuisance because you have to find somewhere to sit them. I haven't bought any lately, but for a while last year I went through a bit of a phase of buying these inks, and there are still more colours that I would like to get one day, but I am enjoying the ones that I have. This indigo colour is spectacular, I love it so much, and these also have a nice stopper on them. So I usually drip some of it into a palette. This also prevents a lot of contamination of the ink itself. So along with these large bottles of Sennelier ink, I also have this little calligraphy set that Nick got me for my birthday last year. And these are exactly the same inks. I've got a review on this so you can check that out. These are the same inks, they're just in super adorable little bottles. I just love these bottles so much. And I have a few colours in here which I don't have in the larger ink collection. But I might have to because there are a few in here which are really beautiful, especially the, I think it was the Burnt Sienna that I really loved. So this one I would like to get a large bottle of, it's such a pretty colour. But this is a beautiful set and I haven't used it as much as I would like to, but it is something I treasure very much. I have three Art Spectrum Artist Pigmented Ink in red, yellow and blue for an art project a couple of years ago and I made these different ink drawings with a black outline and then I dropped these over the top to make kind of rainbow colours and it worked out really well. I haven't used them for a while. They are really lovely though. This colour here is a phthalo blue so it's really good. This one's a really pretty red right in the middle and you can see how that pigment has settled on the bottom so next time I use these I will need to shake them up and then the yellow is a nice one as well so I wouldn't mind getting some more of these over time but I just haven't been using too much ink lately so it's very hard to justify it but the actual quality of the ink itself is really good I have three acrylic inks by Amsterdam and I bought these for a specific project which was painting the skateboard that now hangs on my wall. 
I've got it in black, white and neutral grey. So I used all three of these. These are really awesome as well. I'd like to get more. Acrylic inks are really fun to use. So I would recommend the Amsterdam brand. They're a really high quality one. These two I got in that milligram sale. I think they were less than a dollar each, maybe about 50 cents each. Probably not colours I'm going to use, but I just picked them up because I couldn't resist it. These are calligraphy inks, so I'm assuming that they need to be used with a dip pen and not in a fountain pen. I have these little India inks that Miranda Watson sent me. So these are little scratchboard inks, but they are essentially India inks in primary colours and a black. They're really nice. I haven't used them for a while. I should pull those out. I kind of forgot I had them actually because they were right up against the front wall of the drawer and I can't see them because they're a lot smaller than the other bottles. I also just have some miscellaneous ones in here. These two Art Spectrum Artists inks that I have not used yet. I got these at that art shop garage sale earlier in the year. They were really cheap, I think $2 each. And then I also got this Schmincke Aero Color in black. And I still have not used that either, so... <laughs> Oh dear. Last one that I got in that group is this De La Rowney Indigo ink. So that's another one I need to test out. I'm not sure if it fits into here. I'm pretty sure this is like a drawing ink as well, but this is Daniel Smith Walnut ink. It's a very sepia-y looking color and you can get that really sort of old-fashioned ink from it. So I must get that out to use again soon. And my last bottle is another vintage one that I found, Pelican Waterproof Drawing Ink in Prussian Blue. It is pretty filthy, I still have not cleaned it, but this is just something I picked up in an antique store because I always love bottles of antique ink. And I just remembered on another shelf that I have these two which we found in an antique store a bit earlier this year. They are very dried up, but I just got them for the bottles because these are pretty vintage, these inks by Windsor & Newton, Viridian and Cobalt. And I don't think I want to open that Cobalt up, but you can see they've leaked quite a bit. Nick found these and he picked up, I think it was the Viridian one, and he touched that and he got it all over his fingers. So yeah, I wasn't laughing at all. <laughs> I just heard a rustling and look. Oh, hello Gandalf, you silly thing. What are you doing in there? Always when there's an open drawer or cupboard, the cats just have to get in there. And they materialise from nowhere. He was not here a moment ago. <laughs> uh, well, you can't make a bed in there. You're too big. They're so cute though. It's very hard to stay mad at that face. Okay, my desk is filling up. I had a rummage in that tote that's just there on my desk and I found a few more inks that were lurking in there. These are ones I tend to use quite a lot. So I've got a couple of these Japanese Sumi drawing inks that I got in Daiso. They were really cheap so I ended up with two of them. I've got some Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White and I think I need to get a new one because this one is getting really gluggy and I don't know how to fix that. So <laughs> I've used it quite a lot though. This stuff is excellent and is the whitest ink I've ever experienced. So if you can find one of these, highly recommended. This is one of the first drawing inks I ever owned and it's pretty much all entirely used up. I think that's just a bit of sludge down the bottom. It's a plastic bottle so I'm not super attached to it but because it is the first one I ever owned I will keep that as a memento. I've got another Sennelier India ink. This one is excellent. It's one of the favorites of mine and I have actually used an entire bottle of it up. So this one I kept. I cleaned it out once I'd finished it and this is my new one which I am working on. It's such a lovely black shiny ink. It's a really good one this. This is an ancient Windsor & Newton one that I found in an antique store. You can see it's all dried up. I got it because it was a couple of bucks and I just liked the bottle. I just really like collecting ink bottles as well as the actual ink inside them. I have these two little calligraphy inks by Speedball. I have a feeling these might have dried up a bit as well. For some reason with screw top lids I find that the ink tends to disappear and that is not even going to open. That is welded shut. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> but you can see how there's just barely any liquid left in there and I need to do a bit of research to see if I can add some water to this or if there's another kind of liquid that I can use to sort of reawaken them because this gold one especially is really pretty but I don't think I have much left of it. It's such a bright yellow gold. That's kind of annoying. That's the only trouble with ink sometimes is that they will wear out before I'm ready to use them all. And I also have some by Zeke. This is the black ink which is really good 
and I have a gold and silver mica which I haven't used for a while. These ones are also a bit of a nuisance because that mica is just so heavy and you can see how that's all split so the gold is all at the bottom and you need to get a stick to stir that up but this is a very pretty one as is the silver so I should get those out and do an artwork with them very soon maybe even this month if I get around to it. I don't know that I can get the lid off this one it is completely welded itself shut and I have been struggling with this one for ages. Nick gave it a go and he can't get it off either so this one may well never come out of its bottle <laughs> oh dear. So I have the starter set of Marubu Graphics Aqua Inks and these are really lovely as well. I've got a full video on this showing what they were like and I really enjoy these. They're an ink but they're more like a liquid watercolour so it says it on here watercolour ink. So any liquid watercolour is going to re-wet pretty easily although I did notice that a lot of these also are quite staining so even though they do lift they may not lift because of that staining effect if that makes any sense at all. With aqua inks I also have some aqua drops by Schmincke. I haven't used these for a while so I need to get these ones out again. These are pretty much exactly the same colours. I've got the magenta, a yellow and a cyan blue and we also have a lemon, a magenta and a cyan here so these look very similar. It would be interesting to do a comparison to see if there's any differences between them but honestly when I was doing both videos they felt very similar to me. And then I've got an opaque white here and a black. Black ink is always the most useful one of everything I think. I also got these ones. They are the Paper Mill Watercolour Ink and I have a whole bunch of colours here. I remember this amethyst was really pretty. It has been ages since I've used these. I don't really remember them. I need to do a video on them. Oh we're filling up here. I only really have one more sort of set of things to show. And these are spray inks that I have. I have two Kaiser Craft mists. This one's not even been opened yet. Oh my goodness. These are good for journaling and things like that. And the last lot of inks that I have are these Dilutions ink sprays. I've got quite a few colours here. They are by the company Ranger. So these are for your mixed media and journaling type things that everyone is totally into these days. I got these on super sale because normally they're quite expensive and I just picked up whichever ones they had there. So I've got quite a nice range of them. I'm hoping to use these a bit this month so look out for that. And I almost forgot this box of inks which I keep on top of the chest of Alex drawers and these are my alcohol inks. Which if I open up I have almost filled this whole box. I have room for one more. I've just picked these up at various times over the years slowly adding to my collection. And that is everything. So I shall arrange everything and you can see how much of my desk these take up. <laughs> so this is my full collection of inks covering pretty much my entire desk. Although I do see a little bit of space in the front there so I have room for a few more. <laughs> but I think I do have a sufficient amount of them just looking at them all together. It never looks as much when they're in the drawers but when you pull everything out it's just a colossal amount. So during this month I am intending on using at least some of these inks and they will be featured in my Inktober drawings that I'm planning to do. So let me know what you think. Do you like using inks? Which are your favourite kind of inks? And should I swatch these inks out in one marathon video? Let me know if you want to actually see me swatch all of my colours out because I would be more than happy to add that to my list of videos to make. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button so you can see more inky related antics this month and in the future and I will see you all again really soon in my next video. Have a fantastic day. Swatch you later. Bye!